everyone, it's Lou Collins. Welcome to another of the 10 minute mixed media technique videos. Now today we're actually looking at something different. We have learned an array of background techniques that we've already got started with. And if you've joined me in the Facebook group, you'll see lots of other examples of techniques in there too. So make sure you find that in the description. We're going to be looking at composition today. This is something I get asked a lot. How do I know where to put things on my page or my tag or my um, scrapbook page, whatever it may be. Um, how do I know when I've got too much? How do I stop myself from covering too much of my page? And how do I make things look balanced? So we're going to discuss that today. There's one major rule that I follow that really helps me a lot. We're going to create these three tags very quickly all together using three different compositions. So for a lot of the composition rules, we're going to be using the rule of thirds. And I actually use this in two different ways. So I'm going to be using a third of the page covered as such. So, um, I, and I'll show you how to gauge that in a moment. But also I'm going to be looking at the lines as if my page is divided into threes as well. So what I'm going to do on the back of this one is I'm going to just draw a grid of nine squares and this is just splitting my page into thirds okay so thirds vertically and thirds horizontally you don't need to draw these you just need to be able to visualize them but for the video's sake I'm drawing them on here for you then we want to cover around about a third of our page with embellishments with backgrounds and such like and how do you know you're doing about that much? Now this of course is very broad. You can completely cover your page if that's what you like. For me and a lot of people, the most aesthetically pleasing pages are where there's quite a lot of white space, empty space, and it doesn't have to be white by the way, it can just be blank space of any color, but a third has detail in it. Now I find the easiest way if I'm really stuck for composition ideas is to visualize this grid and take something, it could be glitter, gems, sand, whatever it be. I've got pom-poms here so you can really clearly see them. Something that is going to roughly fill your page. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact and of course there's going to be spaces. So this is just felt pom-pom balls. Roughly filling my page. Okay, so I'm going to take these away and I'm going to divide this into thirds. So you can count the amount if you want but just look at it roughly that looks like about three equal amounts. So put two to the side and then I'm just going to drop these on. So the bulk is there, so I'm just going to drop these. Trouble is they roll, there we go. Okay, so that is around about a third of my page covered. So I've got this little bundle, don't worry about the shape, just look at the area that it's covering and I can move this directly to the centre if I want to but what I ideally want to do to make this look as pleasing to the eye as possible is to have this collection of detail along at least one of these grid lines, these third lines. So I can bring it along here and have it along this vertical line here, the same here like so. I could bring it down so that it sits along this line but also falls, this uh, horizontal line falls almost to the centre of it like so and so on and so forth. So for example if I was to bring this up here what I would do is in my mind but you can certainly do this on a scrap of paper if it helps you is just draw around that blob, remove that and that if this is your page or in our, in our instance our tag this is the area roughly that you will be covering with colour and embellishments and detail. Now I've got three examples here where I've done something similar. Um, I didn't draw around the blobs but what I tend to do is I think of my tags as three different layers. I've got the background which is usually a wash of colour or texture, then I've got the middle ground and then I've got the foreground. The foreground is usually my sentiment, my uh, finishing gems, metal embellishments, things like that, things that you stick on as finishing touches towards the end. As you can see this is a bit similar to what we've just done, so in this area. This one is also quite similar but bringing it up from almost top to bottom of the page but again along that third line. This one is along two of the third lines. This one is along this uh, vertical line on this side, also along this line but because this is smaller 
and not quite taking up a third of the page, I've echoed some directly opposite in the top corner here. So if I was to do this blob, so okay, let's bring it this way. If I was to do my detail up here, I would just echo a small amount of everything I'm doing here or some of the elements I'm doing here, much smaller scale, just on this edge here to complete that one third of a page or tag covered. So hopefully that explains how I use the rule of thirds and how roughly I can get myself a composition ready to start creating. So I'm going to use these three images here and I'm going to create on the tags. We're using the same elements or roughly the same elements and I'm only going with three layers. So I'll do a background splash of colour, I'll do something in the middle, it might be a tag, a piece of ephemera, ticket, something like that and then a finishing touch on top following these so you can see how easily it's done. Now because I'm working on quite a small area on these tags, I'm keeping the area of the ink quite small. Let's start with, this is actually a square almost, so let's go to this one and I'm just going to press this down. Now what I like about this is the uh, unpredictability of it, so we don't know exactly where that colour is going to fall, where the, what the pattern's going to be like or anything like this. So just putting that on there, allowing that to dry. On this particular one, I need to have a little bit of colour also in this top right hand or left hand corner. I am terrible with my lefts and rights. I don't know them. No, I really have to think about them. I don't know if anyone else is the same. Now, along with a splash of colour, I'm always going to add texture if you know me at all. Um, you know I love my stamping, particularly script and text stamps. So this is a great way as well. If your colour splash hasn't quite reached the areas that you want it to in the background or if the shape's gone a little bit um, not the way you hoped, you can use just a light stamp of some text to highlight it, to stretch it out into other areas and such like. So I'm going to do that with this one. Um, I think I just want a bit more at the top here. And you can, the great thing about stamps nowadays, when now they're not on wooden blocks anymore, is you can shape them by holding them and rolling them to fit really anywhere you want them to. So whether you want them to stand vertically, horizontally, just a small area, a large area, you, know, you really can be very versatile with them. So there's my background. Now for the middle ground. Now I have a huge amount of these gorgeous paper dolls from Tim Holtz. This is the perfect ephemera. I just absolutely love these images. So I'm going to build up my toppers as such, which is my middle ground with these, and maybe a little bit of washi tape as well. I'll be using the washi tape because some of these uh, are sitting, some are standing, some are leaning on things. So, um, and they're the ones I actually really like when they are like, this little boy here is leaning. Um, it kind of bonds them to the background because they are interacting with the surface that they are on. And of course, if you don't have similar ephemera, you can absolutely be printing off your own photos at home of yourself and your family, all posing like this. Drop them down to grayscale and print them off and cut them out. And now for my third layer, my finishing touch. So for this one, I talked about putting some of the detail, echoing it over to the other side, because this wasn't originally going to be around about a third quite. Um, it probably because the gentleman that I've used there, the paper doll is quite large. It does actually reach around about a third, but I do like this echo over the other side. And I tend to do that quite a lot if I'm focusing really quite close to one edge. So one of the sentiments that I'm going to use for this one, uh, I'm going to use black certainly for this one because I've got a lot of white here, named down to his white shirt really. So I'm going to use a black sentiment here and I'm going to use a long one that will fit across uh, so a couple of words here and then finish the sentence down here. Now again we're looking at the rule of thirds in a way but actually using odd numbers. So um, whenever I'm putting sentiment strips down um, I'm not going to put two strips or four strips. It's going to be one, three, five, I mean usually one but actually th uh, three kind of feels more natural to me so I've split this one into three. That more so because it fit on the tag that way. Um, it's a beautiful day to leave me alone. I'm going to use this in white for this strip because the lady in the middle, her black skirt, 
is there. So it's a beautiful, let's split this into three to leave me alone. There we go. So she's got a black skirt here and right over the skirt because it's just a solid black couple. Let's do this in the right order. There we go. To leave me alone. Brilliant. I love that. It's a beautiful day to leave me alone. And then one more. Again, I think I am going to go white with this one. Um, don't judge me. Just don't judge me. A nice simple one. I do tend to snip the ends off just to make them uh, so they don't have blank space at the ends. There. So to go again, overlapping like so. Now, as I say, there's a lot, lot more that I could be adding to these, but for composition purposes, hopefully you can see how using only a third of your page, finding only a third, and it doesn't have to be in any particular place, it could just be that that one third area is absolutely anywhere on your page. But, as I've explained, it does seem to be a little more pleasing to the eye if you can have that one third area falling on those grid lines that we did on this one here. So hopefully everybody that has explained roughly how to get started with composition on your art journal page, your scrapbook page, even your greeting cards if that's what you like to do. And if you are interested in finding out more about the mixed media, the 10 minute mixed media techniques, I've got a full series. It's a playlist on YouTube. I'll make sure that's linked up here for you. And you can find the Facebook page linked in the description below as well. So you can go along and join us and see lots of other techniques. We've covered all of these already. So you'll be able to find out how to do each of those and join us.